So we got some Kif New Balances. Kif has got a bit of a bad rep in it. I think I texted my mate about Kif and he gave me some long soliloquy about how naff they are. But I like what Ronnie Fake does, man. I think, again, for somebody that's um, running a contemporary streetwear brand, especially a newer one, he has taken it from zero to 100 in a very, very short space of time, right? there, It's a very polished operation. And I think I remember someone here, someone saying about Ronnie that he is, um, he's a bit of a monk. Like, all he does is work and hang out with his family. He doesn't do anything else. So, which explains why it's such a, it comes across such a polished brand. You get don't get the feeling that it's kind of, you know, some bedroom operation running on Shopify with people shipping stuff a month late. It looks like a real polished company. Like, he's trying to build a brand. Something that he could essentially step away from when he's older or hand the reins to his kids or people that he's close with. Like, that's what it feels like. I feel like he's really good, a real contemporary kind of streetwear brand. And again, he's really flying the flag for streetwear at that level, at that kind of high, kind of luxury, street lux level. I don't know what you'd call it. Like, if I, if I think of those new White Air Force ones that are going to come out by Kiff, I think of that kind of street lux, right? Um, and again, one of the main kind of power, um, or one of these kind of main tools, or one main attributes, one of the things that really separates him from the pack is his ability to really smash calibrations out of the park. Like, whatever brand it is, he's able to bring the Kif DNA to that brand and offer his customer something really special, something really bespoke, something really, you know, timeless that you can kind of wear, you know, um, regardless of when it came out, they, they still look fresh. And again, for somebody else, I, I, I don't know if he's a, if he's a sneakhead by heart, but I'd imagine so. It's very hard to do because once you get the keys in the factory for a sneaker brand, there is that kind of a law to just go crazy and do all the things that you wanted to do, all the dreams that you had when you were collecting dusty sneakers back in the day. But I think his ability to kind of, you know, again, scratch his own itch as a sneaker head and also kind of deliver to his customers is really unparalleled. And no more, and there's no better example of it than this new uh, Balance collaboration that just got featured here on Hypebeast. So it says Ronnie Vague um, reveals the next Kif and New Balance collaboration. It says the following here, although the world is eagerly awaiting the Air Force One collaboration, which I mentioned previously, is um, one of my favorite shoes um, or something that I'm kind of keeping my eye on. Uh, I'm not sure how a, how ready available they're going to be, but I love them. They remind me of the old school Code.jp or the Japanese only kind of um, Air Force One edition, especially with the little swoosh at the front um, of the toe box. I can't wait for those, but you know, I'm assuming they're going to be quite hard to get a hold of. But apart from that, like again, let's just continue the article. Uh, the kid found that Ronnie Fake is not one of the is not one to rest on his laurels, and the Queen's native recently teased a New Balance take on the seven on the 1700. Uh, Faye and New Balance have put together a prolific amount of releases over the course of the long-standing partnership, but this marks the first uh, 700 created by the two. And again, that's what I like about um, Ronnie Fake, right? Say what we want about the guy or about his brand, but he takes chances. He's always kind of collaborating with brands he could easily kind of just bang out nike collaboration after nike collaboration right just do air force one colorways by the ton but he tends to always go for models that are a little bit under the radar right and then kind of bring them to life and elevate them a little bit and again who's the last person you heard doing a collaboration on a new balance 700 tell me oh wait exactly no one no one's doing that Everyone's doing 574s, 1900, 900, 8, whatever. What's what I've got the 850. Like, no one's doing um, 574, 573, I mentioned previously, right? No one's doing the 1700. It's a real, like, heads new balance, right? You have to be kind of in the know to kind of know about it. And again, for him to kind of sprinkle his DNA on it is a big risk, too, because you don't know if the consumers are going to be willing to buy it. But again, it goes to show just how how confident he is in his uh, ability to actually design and make really good sneakers and again doing collaborations in this kind of way of form especially nowadays is a bit it's a bit it's a bit old school right everyone's now most people are especially there was a period in time where most people especially i think when all the bin show guys were doing stuff with nike it felt as if everyone was trying to make their own model right instead of going doing retros and just changing the colorway it seemed like the real swaggy thing or the real thing to kind of separate yourself from the pack was to kind of go out there and make your own model, right? Um, design, bring down your, uh, bring your own last, like Jerry Lorenzo did with his Nike collaboration, but really kind of push the envelope and really use the Nike factories or push their factories to the limit. But I also like the idea that some designers, some influencers, some brand owners are also adopting the old school method and just taking a model that already exists and kind of you know changing the colorway somewhat, messing up the materials, which again is probably the hardest thing to do. It's similar, I would imagine, to like fashion. The real, the real kind of high level, the high caliber fashion designers like a Raph Simmons, you can tell that 
he, you can if you put like three suits down a runway, you had them running, walking down a runway, right? Three suits. You could tell um, by the level of finish, just like a simple black suit with a white shirt. You could tell the difference of like a Ralph Simmons suit, any other designer that occupies that sort of space because he operates those high level operators are able to really uh, make the simple, the kind of basic thing look just, you know, delightful. And I think this is another good um, indication of this too. Um, so you've got this 1700 that has, what do you call it? Navy, some teal, some pink. And then reminds me a little bit of the mad hectics that I had from back in the day. Do you remember those? I actually regret selling them, but that model really hurt my feet because it had those weird kind of, it had that tectronic -y thing that makes your feet step inward. I forgot how it's called. Let me see if I can find it. Mad Hectic New Balance. I had these from time ago. These were kind of, they might, they might be my first New Balance actually during the whole Crooked Tongue era. So these are the shoes I had, right? I had this one here. I had this one in the middle. I think I'm going to get up on the screen for you. What model is that? It's the MT580. Right, so this is the model I, I I had. Um, yeah, so that was a pack, and I had the model. I think that model here in the middle, or was it the other one? No, I think it might have been something else. Actually, no, it wasn't. I, thought, I don't think it was that. Actually, I think it might have been. That was a Stussy one, Magnetic and Stussy. I think yeah, it was one of these ones. So August two thousand six, that New Balance. I had the one there in the middle. That was the one I had. Right, and it had this weird tectronic -y sort of thing. So it's like the one I had was like pink, blue, and silver. Had this weird thing on the instep where it sort of like made your feet clump in. So it weren't the most comfortable shoes in the world. But again, a really great colorway. Done really well. Again, you're not going to get, you know, Japanese brands aren't going to miss when it comes to New Balance colorways. But yeah, man, these running fig and Kif um, New Balances look cool. Um, it also continues in classic Kif fashion. The co-created silhouettes is crafted from a medley of premium materials, various shades of pink, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, they're due to come out soon. Oh, end of January, so definitely check those out. They look really interesting. I like the look of them. A really cool shoe. And again, just another indication of just how high level um, Kif is kind of operating at. And again, if you're a brand out there and you're trying to introduce a new model and you want someone to kind of, you know, trial it on the industry, on the market, there's no better person to go to than Kif, man. He's, he's the Don when it comes to that sort of stuff. So, yeah, no surprise there. So definitely check that out.